OK, class, this is Lecture 6 in the series of Focus Lectures, and this lecture is devoted to how the financial system works and how investment works. And we cover all the different areas of investment, from banking, fund management, corporate finance, investment, all that kind of thing. So it's a, a very uh, high-level oversight of how all the aspects of the financial system work. OK, so let's start by uh, looking at... In fact, let's look at the overview of the whole presentation and we can get an idea of really what we're talking about. So we're going to start by thinking about what money is, okay, where it comes from, why we have money. Then we're going to look at the banking system, why we have banks, what banks are for, how they work, what they do. Then we're going to look at corporate finance and investment. Corporate finance is basically how companies uh, raise money, how they borrow money from the market by issuing bonds and shares. And then investment is how savers uh, save money by buying those bonds and shares, how they make the decision about which things to buy, bonds or shares. But it all starts with the basic principle of what is money. Okay. So let's look at the first few slides and think about what is money. Well, if you think about the most basic form of the economy, okay, the most basic form of the economy is a barter economy. In a barter economy, you don't actually need money at all. Okay, you can just swap things with other items. So this chap here, we're going to call person A, uh, has a cow and he would like to eat bacon. This person here, person B, has some pigs but would like to eat beef. Okay, so all you need to do in this very, very simple economy is for person A to swap the cow with the pigs and then he can eat the bacon and person B can eat the beef. Very, very simple indeed. However, if you have more participants in the economy, if you have more stakeholders in the economy, that sort of principle ceases to be possible. So if you have the scenario where you have three stakeholders in the economy and there isn't a just pairwise swaps that they want to do, so here uh, A wants to eat the pigs, B wants to eat the fish, and C wants to eat the beef. Uh, you could still use barter, uh, but all three participants would then have to sit down at the same time and come to the same agreement at the same time. You couldn't do each transaction in sequence. Okay? So as we explain here, C only has one fish, so can't make a straight swap. A and C, A can give C the beef he wants, but A doesn't want fish. Let me just look at that again. Okay, so A doesn't want fish, but he can provide the beef to C. So they can't, A and C can't do a simple deal. And similarly, all three uh, pairs of people can't do a simple deal just between the pair of them. Okay, so we have a si si situation where this just isn't going to work unless, unless we have some more sophisticated system of recording the transactions. And that system that we need to record these transactions is basically called money. That is fundamentally what money is. Money is the scoreboard of the capitalist system. It is not the intrinsic essence of our wealth, but it is the measure through which we record our wealth. We record how much work we've done for others when our money goes up, our score goes up, and we record how much work others have done for us when our score goes down because we pay them money for doing that work. So let's look at the system again with money in it this time and see how it works. So I've added some things to our diagram. I've given the cow a value of £10, the pigs a value of £3 each, and the fish a value of £4. I've also, to enable this monetary system to get going, I've given uh, person B here £5 and person C here £10. Now we can see what's going to happen. If we look down here, we can see what the transactions are going to be. So C is going to buy the cow from A for £10. Okay, since C is starting off with £10, he can buy the cow for £10. He then has no pounds, a fish worth £4, and a cow worth £10. A then has £10. So although there is no natural barter transaction between A and C, introducing money into the system, the barter is between the £10 value cow and the £10 of cash. 
And because we've introduced this cash into the system, we can keep track of this transaction. Because after this transaction, A has the £10 and C has the cow. So the, th the system is still fair. Then B buys the fish from C for £4. So again, um, B doesn't have anything to offer C that C wants, really. C wants beef, and A and B only has uh, pigs. So B doesn't really have anything to offer, but that's where the money comes in, because by having money, B can offer £4 for the fish, and then C is then rewarded for having parted with the fish. So again, the rubble of money is to avoid there needing to be pairwise transactions that actually make sense. And the final transaction is A can then buy the three pigs from B for £9. So A, remember, has now got £10, having sold the cow, so can now afford to buy three pigs from B. And at the end of the day, you have A has three pigs and £1. Okay, B has one fish and £10, and C has one cow and £4. And if we look at that transaction, we can see the total value each party has is the same at the end as it was at the beginning. So A started off with £10 worth of cow and finished up with three pigs worth £3 each and £1. So still has £10 of value. B starts off with £14 of value and ends up with a fish worth £4 and £10 of cash. And C starts off with £14 of value and ends up with a cow worth £10 and £4. So they are all equally well off at the end as they were at the start, but they've each got the products they now want. A has the pigs to eat bacon, B has the fish to eat fish, and C has the cow to eat beef. Okay, so what money has done has enabled these this more complicated transaction to take place without there needing to be pairwise barters set up. Okay, they don't need to all sit down at the same time and do a multilateral deal, which would be very complicated, um, and they don't need to just be able to barter bilaterally between two parties. Whatever com complexity of arrangement they want can be arranged because money is acting as the scoreboard, which basically keeps track of who has provided what product to what person. Okay, so that's just zooming in to show you what the transactions are and what the situation is at the end of those transactions. Okay, so once we've established that we need money to uh, keep track of the system, to be the scoreboard of the system, the problem we have is this cash is then, you know, in, the, in old days, physical gold coins, for example, so it had, it had intrinsic value to it. So we have a question of how we keep this money safe. And that is the role of the banking system. So the next thing we need to look at is how banks work. And I'll stop the tape now so the tapes don't become unwieldy. And we'll go on to the next, um, the next tape with that.